Hi there, and thanks for tuning in. Today's notes are going to be called 4.3, Writing Equations of Parallel and Perpendicular Lines. Today we're going to be looking for six things to write in our notes. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to write down is, and look at is what are parallel lines um, and how that affects your slope. So parallel lines are two lines that never intersect, never intersect and they're always on the same plane. Non-vertical lines are parallel if and only if they have the same slope. So parallel lines need to have the same slope. And then obviously all vertical lines will be parallel as well. Let's go ahead and take time now to pause the video so you can write down this in your notes for number one. And once you're done, click play so you can see how it's done. So what we're going to do here is look at to see each of the lines and determine which ones are parallel. In order to do that, remember they need to have the same slope. Okay, and one fail-proof way that we can find the same slope is we do the difference in y's. So y2 minus y1 over the difference in x and x's, x2 minus x1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find that for a, b, and c to see which ones have the same slope. For a, I'm just going to do 3 minus 2 over negative, one, negative 4 minus 1. 3 minus 2 is 1, and negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. So my slope for a letter A is negative 1 fifth. Okay, for letter B, I'm going to do 0 minus negative 1, and then negative 3 minus 1. 0 minus negative 1 means 0 plus positive 1. That's going to give me 1. 3, negative 3 minus 1, that's going to give me negative 4. So that's negative 1 fourth. So right now I know that A and B are not parallel because they do not have the same slope. Letter C, I'm going to do negative 4 minus negative 5, and then negative 3 minus 2. Negative 4 plus positive 5 gives me a 1, and negative 3 plus negative 2 gives me a negative 5, so that's negative 1 fifth slope. So notice that A and C are parallel, okay, because they have the same slope. So that is essentially what you're going to try on this next page. You're going to find the slope for each of these, line A and line B, and determine if they are parallel. Once you find out if they're parallel, play the video so you can check your work. Let's go ahead and pause it now so you can try it by yourself. All right, so for line A, I'm going to do 3 minus negative 1, and then negative 5 minus negative 6 for my change in x's. 3 minus negative 1 means positive 4, and negative 5 plus positive 6 gives me a 1, so this slope is 4. And then for letter B, I'm going to do negative 2 minus negative 7, and 3 minus 2. Negative 2 minus negative 7 changes to negative 2 plus positive 7, which is 5, and 3 minus 2 is 1, so that slope is 5. So these are not parallel because they have different slopes. The next thing we're going to look at is how to write an equation of a line that passes through 5, negative 4 and is parallel to this line already. y is equal to 2x plus, 2x plus 3. The nice thing about this is we can plug in using our slope intercept form. Okay, so the very first thing, my slope has to be 2. So I'm going to plug that in to m. And then one next thing I can do is just plug in x and y values to find the appropriate b, which is your y-intercept. So that's what I'm going to do here, and I'm going to do that in a different color just so you can see how that's done. So my x is 5, so I'm going to plug that in right next to the 2 and my y is negative 4. So now I have this. Negative 4 is equal to 2 times 5 plus b. Now I can go ahead and solve for b here. 2 times 5 is 10, so I have 10 plus b on the right side and still negative 4 on the left. And then to get b by itself, I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. Excuse me. So that b is equal to negative 14. So if b is equal to negative 14, I'm going to go back to my drawing board of y is equal to mx plus b. I did say that slope had to be 2. And then b is now negative 14, so I'm going to say 2x minus 14 is equal to 
y. You could also use point slope form to do this. I feel like y interest, uh, slope intercept form gets you there a little quicker, so that's why I showed you this method. But if you wanted to use slope intercept form or point slope form, I'm going to show you that later on in an example for perpendicular. Let's go ahead and try this one by yourself. So again, use your x and y values and your same slope to help you determine what kind of equation should that line look like. Let's go ahead and pause the video now so you can try these on your own and then click play when you're ready to check. So just remember, your slope has to be equal to 1 fourth for this one. So when I'm using y is equal to mx plus b, I'm plugging in m as 1 fourth, and then I need to plug in my x and y values to solve for b. So x is equal to negative 4, and then y is equal to 2. So 2 is equal to 1 fourth times negative 4, and then plus b. 1 fourth times negative 4 was negative 1, so negative 1 plus b is equal to 2. And then I'm just going to solve, I'm going to add 1 to both sides, so that b is equal to 3. So when I write my equation, it'll say y is equal to 1 fourth x, there's my same slope, and then plus b, which is 3. Okay. Next thing we're going to look at is perpendicular lines, and perpendicular lines have the slopes that are negative reciprocals. Negative reciprocals. So here are two examples. Line or the blue line has a slope of negative 2x, and the red line has a slope of positive 1 half x. So basically, if they are just opposite reciprocals, like 2x and 1 half x, or negative 3x, sorry, or negative 3x and positive 1 third x, you could also have like negative 1 fifth x and 5x. These are all examples of opposite slopes, okay? So they have to be negative reciprocals of one another. Let's go ahead and take time now to pause the video so you can write down this sentence right here. I would also maybe choose some examples to write down as well so you know what they look like. All right, now that we know what perpendicular lines and slopes should look like, let's go ahead and see how it's done. This one says determine which of the lines, if any, are parallel or perpendicular. So we're going to look to see if anything matches there. Line A is already in slope intercept form, so I'm going to keep it like that. Line B is not, so I'm going to go ahead and subtract x from both sides to get y by itself. So I'll get 4y is equal to negative x plus 3. And then I'm going to divide all sides by 4. So I get y is equal to negative 1 fourth x plus 3 fourths. I already can tell that my perpendicular is going to be A and B because they have negative reciprocal slopes. Negative 1 fourth is the negative opposite reciprocal of a positive 4x. For line C, I'm also going to change that to slope intercept form. So I'm going to add 2x to both sides. So I have negative 8y is equal to 2x plus 16. And then I'm going to divide all sides by negative 8. So that y is equal to, again, negative 1 fourth x minus 2. I do see that there are two parallel lines. And the parallel lines are b and c because they have the same slope. I'm going to show you that to, to you in blue. Here's the negative 1 fourth x in both lines b and c. So parallel would be b and c, but perpendicular is a and b. So b was kind of like if you had a Venn diagram, b is perpendicular to a, but it's also parallel to c. Okay, so here, here's one that you're going to try for number five. Let's go ahead and pause the video here so you can try it. Determine which ones are parallel or perpendicular. So you'll have kind of two answers, which ones are parallel and which ones are perpendicular. And once you're done, click play. Okay, so for letter A, <coughs> excuse me, I'm gonna make 2x to go on the other side here. So I'm gonna subtract 2x from both sides. So I'm gonna get 6y is equal to negative 2x minus 3, and divide all sides by 6 to get y is equal to negative 1 third x minus 1 half. The next thing I'm going to look at is line B, and I notice that I already have a positive 3x, 
So I can already I can go ahead and determine that the perpendicular lines are line A and line B because they have opposite or negative reciprocal slopes. For line C, if I take negative eight, if I take 18x and put it to the other side to get y by itself, I'll get negative 6y is equal to negative 18x plus 9. And then I'm going to divide all sides by negative 6 so that I get y is equal to positive 3x minus 3 over 2. Okay. Um, notice that I have a positive 3x here in line C. Like I also had a positive 3x in line B. So the parallel lines are B and C. Okay. The next thing we're going to talk about, and this is our last thing on our notes, you're going to watch how to find an equation perpendicular to the line y is equal to 1 half x plus 3. So we did, before we did slope intercept form, y is equal to mx plus b. You can still do that here, or you can do point slope form, y minus y1 is equal to um, m parentheses x minus x1. Okay, so I'm going to show you point slope form here just so you can see how it's done another way, but then I'll also show you real quick that it still can be done with your um, slope intercept form. So we know that our slope is one half. So my slope has to be negative 2x because that needs to be perpendicular to the one positive one half x. Then I need to make sure that I use my y my x and y values of negative 3 and positive 1 and plug it into point slope form. So here's point slope form and I'm just going to plug in my values. So y minus 1 is equal to my m which is negative 2 and then I need to take that x off and then x minus negative 3 which would which would reduce to or simplify to y minus 1 is equal to negative 2 parentheses x plus 3 because double negatives and then I'm going to distribute, so negative 2x minus 6 over on the right side and y minus 1 on the left side. Add 1 to both sides, so I get y is equal to negative 2x minus 5. Okay, again, that was one way you could still do it with slope-intercept form, so I'm going to show that, you, show that to you real quickly. Again, here's your slope-intercept form, y is equal to mx plus b. I plug in y, which is 1, my slope, which is negative 2, and my x, which is negative 3 and then solve for b. So I get 1 is equal to a positive 6 plus b, and then subtract 6 from both sides, I get negative 5 is equal to b. So y is equal to negative 2x minus 5 still. You probably like this version better with the slope-intercept form. You can still use that, or you could do point-slope form, whatever works better for you. So here's the last one in your notes that you're going to try. Again, it, you want it to be perpendicular to the y is equal to negative 3x. So think about the negative reciprocal of negative 3x. Let's go ahead and pause number 6, try it, and once you're done, click play. All right, for number 6, I prefer to do slope-intercept form because it goes a little bit quicker, so I'm going to do that one. The slope for this in number 6 needs to be a positive 1 -third. So for m, I'm going to plug in 1 -third x is negative 3 and then y is a positive 5. So 1 third times negative 3 that's negative 1 and then I'm going to add 1 to both sides so I get b is equal to 6 excuse me and then once I'm ready I can write that as slope intercept form y is equal to 1 third x plus if you use points up form, you still should get the same answer no matter what. Okay, that's going to be all for our notes today. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you next.